we produce 29 million tons of cotton every single year, which for reference is about enough to make 29 t-shirts for every single person on the planet. We produce a huge amount of it. It's the most commonly used fibre on the planet and people like it because it's light, breathable and durable. If you have a look through your wardrobe, you're probably going to own something that's at least partly made of cotton. So the thing about cotton is it's actually a plant. Uh, so the thing that we use to make fabric is like a white fluffy fibre that surrounds a seed in a cotton plant. We pick that, we take the seeds out and then we spin the white fluffy fibre into a thread. And while cotton is a natural fibre, which means it isn't causing plastic pollution in the same way that man-made fabrics are, it comes with its own set of problems. Cotton production uses a lot of water and a lot of chemicals. This is a massive problem because cotton is often being produced in countries where not everyone has access to clean water in the first place. And the diversion of water from aquifers and local ecosystems is having a massive impact. The drying up of the Aral Sea, which has been happening really gradually over the last 40 years, has been linked to cotton production. As well as water use, the chemicals that we use to produce cotton at the moment are causing a big problem for the people growing it. Pesticide poisoning can cause cancer, neurological diseases and infertility. There are lots of amazing people who are trying to improve the sustainability of the cotton that we're buying, but as with a lot of things, there is no easy solution to fix the problem. I'm off to talk to Sarah, who is part of the Soil Association, to find out what they're doing to improve the sustainability of our cotton. So my first question is, what is organic cotton? Okay, well, at its heart, organic cotton is really about working with rather than against nature. So it relies on the natural systems and processes of nature rather than on artificial inputs to control things like pests and disease and to build fertility in the soil. What are the problems with current cotton production? Well, you've probably heard that current cotton production has a really bad press, and rightly so. So about 14% of all the insecticides used in the world are used just on cotton. Wow. And then also about 3% of all the water that we use mm -hmm. is used just on that one crop which is obviously not good. <laughs> um, and part of the reason for that is that it's a system that relies on artificial input. So artificial per pesticides, mm -hmm. artificial fertilizers in order to kind of um, control and um, grow the crops. And why were these used in the first place? Well, the thing about it is that you can produce a lot of crop quickly, mm -hmm. which sounds great. You know, yield is often seen as the most important thing when it comes to growing crops. But it's no good if you just focus on the short term. You know, we need a system of farming that will last for generations to come. And conventional production just isn't going to do that. What would the consequences be if we carried on producing cotton in the way that we are at the moment? Well, if we just continue to focus on yield without really thinking about production in terms of soil health, mm -hmm. um, then it's going to cause long-term problems. The sort of problems we're, also, we're already starting to see. Uh, so things like uh, soils will become exhausted, which means that they will no longer be productive. And also if soils are exhausted and they lose their good structure, then um, it means that uh, nutrients get washed away into waterways and rivers and pollute them. And that uh, basically we won't have a long term sustainable food and fibre supply. So will this have an effect on our food security and how we grow food? Yeah, of course, yeah. So cotton is just one crop. Um, it's grown in the same way as other crops are, other food crops as well. So with organic production, you have the single crop rotation. Mm -hmm. And that's when you grow the, say you grow the cotton crop one year and then the next year you'll grow something else like a pea or a legume and they um, get the nitrogen from the air and fix it in the soil. Mm -hmm. Now in conventional production, that would be done by applying artificial nitrogen fertilizer. In organic, you use natural systems, you grow crops to, to um, get that nitrogen into the soil. And this would be the way that we have grown crops for thousands of years yeah. beforehand. Yeah, exactly. But um, organic farming isn't about going back in time. You know, we rely on science and innovation to make sure that um, the methods we use today is based on um, good science um, and that also uh, works with the, the cycles and systems of nature to ensure that there's long-term sustainable production. What are the problems with the amount of water that conventional cotton production uses? It's not really the cotton itself's fault. Right. You know, cotton is a pretty thirsty crop, but it doesn't have to use a lot of water. Um, independent peer-reviewed studies have found that organic uses 91% less water than um, conventionally grown cotton. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> um, yeah, and one of the reasons for that is because uh, organic cotton 
um, it's, it's grown in a system that really focuses on building soil fertility. Mm -hmm. And then the soil becomes like a sponge, which means that uh, it can trap water well. So in times of um, flood, it sort of absorbs all the water and then will release it in times of drought, rather than letting the water just flow through the soil, which can also wash all the nutrients and the goodness in the soil away, meaning that it would no longer be available to the plants. With organic, all of those nutrients and that water is locked in to be available for growing. And that's really important in a changing climate. With um, climate change, we're seeing extremes of uh, cycles of flood and drought. And climate change um, and soil, organic soils are more resilient in the face of climate change. This is the thing, because when people hear that 3% of the world's water is used on cotton, they might think that 3% doesn't sound like that much. But actually, when you think about how many people don't have access to clean water, the droughts that are affecting parts of the world where this cotton is being grown, the fact that 3% of clean water is being used for a crop when it doesn't need to be, it's kind of baffling. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing, yeah. <laughs> Who are the Soil Association? Well, we were founded in 1946 mm -hmm. by a group of concerned scientists, nutritionists and people involved in health um, who recognised that there was a link between healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy people and the planet. And um, they were concerned with the way that uh, agriculture was going. And so they set up the Soil Association to some, address some of these issues. We campaign on a range of issues to do with um, sustainable food, farming and health. And we also certify products to um, certain standards and you can find a Soil Association symbol on products that range from uh, food products to textiles and health and beauty. Go and have a look around because you will see it. I'll put it in the description so you can see it. You'll find something with the Soil Association logo on it. Um, and why does the Soil Association want uh, more organic cotton production? As you know, cotton production is very damaging to people in the environment. And organic has an answer, and it's a very compelling answer. In fact, um, organic cotton uses 91% less water than conventionally produced cotton. Climate change impacts of Organic is 46% less than conventionally produced cotton. Just, it's such a positive story in the face of something that's very negative. So we were talking earlier about the differences between organic food and organic textile production. And you were saying that while there's laws that cover organic food, there are no laws that cover organic textiles, which is baffling to me. Um, but that means that a brand can just say that it's using organic cotton if it isn't? Brands don't have to be certified to say that they're using organic cotton. Mm -hmm. They can just say it. It's not covered in the same way that food is yet. But lots of um, brands and retailers choose to get certification mm -hmm. because this is a way of um, guaranteeing to their customers that what they say is actually true. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of, um, that they themselves can know that their whole supply chain has met certain standards. And what are the logos that people should be looking out for when they're buying organic cotton? So there's also the GOTS symbol. Mm -hmm. So Soil Association, and um, we certify to the GOTS standard. So if you see the GOTS symbol or the Soil Association symbol on a garment, you can be sure that everything in the supply chain has met strict standards at the farm and at the factory. Mm -hmm. There's also other certifications like the organic content standard, and that just makes sure that the cotton that's in the final product has been produced organically, but it doesn't check anything at the factory. So what are the differences between the GOT standard and the organic content standard? So they both make sure that the final product contains organic cotton, um, but where GOTS is different is that it also means that that product has met strict requirements in the factory as well. Mm -hmm. So this relates to um, environmental things such as making sure that there's low impact um, dyes and inks and that any wastewater has been treated before it's pumped into the local environment so that it doesn't poison rivers and lakes. Mm -hmm. And also strict social criteria have been met so that workers are protected and that they are paid fairly. And what are some of the social problems that are caused by current cotton production? Well, when it comes to the farm, um, there's a whole range of problems from health um, associated with the use of uh, the sprays that are used to control insect pests, mm -hmm. um, as well as issues to do with food security. And this is another area where organic cotton is great because Within organic, you have to do this thing called crop rotation, mm -hmm. which is where you grow your crop, your cotton crop one year, and then another year you'll grow something else um, to help improve the fertility of the soil. But that, that other crop can also be a really good source of food or an alternative income. Mm -hmm. Organic cotton farmers tend to have a much more stable income 
and a stable supply of food. So, uh, and also because they're not using the artificial sprays, that's not getting onto their food crops either. So one of the things I've been researching and I wanted to ask you about is GM, which is genetically modified crops, which are still being used by a lot of farmers across the world to produce cotton. Yeah. Um, so what are they exactly? Genetically modified cotton um, has been modified to include a gene mm -hmm. that makes the cotton repel insect pests. So it sounds great in theory, you know, rather than having to use pesticides, you just grow this plant and it contains all the pesticides it needs. But in reality, it's been very different and it's failed farmers across the world. Now, there's been a lot of hype about how great GM is in terms of yields and reducing the need for pesticides, but it's the, the reality is simply not true. What's actually happened is there's been huge problems with crop failures, which have meant that farmers lose their crop and then also can't afford, afford the fees for the seeds and the sprays that are needed to address the pest problems that they face. And why have the crops been failing? So the reason the crops have failed um, is firstly, there's, there's two reasons, there's two ways that GM crops have failed. So firstly, when GM crops were first grown by the farmers, um, the main target pests that they were designed to repel, it worked, you know, they did repel them. But what, hadn't, what the scientists who developed the GM hadn't really thought about is that GM, the crops don't exist in a vacuum <laughs> and nature's very clever. So because those target pests weren't there, all it meant was that other pests came and ate the crops instead. So initially farmers had a huge problem with secondary pests, they're called. Um, and then the second problem came a couple of years later when the primary pests that the crops were designed to repel just grew resistant to the technology. And so the GM no longer worked. And so then farmers were stuck with these expensive seeds that weren't working, expensive sprays which they had to use to deal with the insect pests that the crops were supposed to have dealt with. And of course then the actual crop failure. And then that is just a, a um, perfect storm of problems which led to huge amounts of farmer debt and ultimately suicides. And we're not just talking about a few farmers, it's over 10,000 farmers across India have committed suicide directly or indirectly as a result of GM crops. So why are people still using them? Um, well, it's a good question really. Um, the GM lobby is very powerful. There's still lots of stories out there about how GM uh, can save the world. But the reality is, is just simply not true. It's not been borne out in the reality of how, um, how it's worked in the real world. And it's taking a while for that reality to sink in and for things to change. And also farmers just don't have access to alternatives because the GM industry is so powerful uh, that it means that farmers often can't find alternative seeds can't find organic or non-GM seeds. Uh, but you cannot use GM seeds in organically grown cotton? No, so GM is completely banned under all organic standards everywhere in the world. What would you say to the guys watching at home are the key things that they should take away? So really the main one is that buying organic cotton is better for people and the planet on many different levels. Um, and that if you want to be able to make a positive change in your purchasing decisions, then organic's a really great way to do that. So sometimes some of the environmental challenges and the social challenges that we're told about, you can feel very helpless about what you can do. Um, but you, just by buying organic cotton, you can know that you're making a really positive contribution to the lives of people around the world and also to yourself. Thank you so much for speaking to us. If you want to find out more about any of the stuff that we've been talking about, I will put a link to the Soil Association's website in the description so that you can find out some more about it. Producing cotton organically is better for farmers, it's better for our soil, and it's better for us. As Sarah mentioned, there are a few certifications that will help you identify whether something is organic, and we're gonna run through them really quickly. GOTS, or the Global Organic Textile Standard, is pretty much the gold standard globally. So, cotton produced with this certification means it has to be 70% organic cotton. No harmful chemicals are used in the process at all. It covers every part of the garment making process, including buttons and zips. It does not allow the use of genetically modified seeds. And on top of all of that, it has really great standards for workers' rights. The next one is the organic content standard. This certification means that the cotton has been grown organically and it's been traced along the supply chain by a third party independent body. The finished product will contain organic fibres, but it won't necessarily have been processed to organic standards. 
If you're wondering where fair trade comes into all of this, fair trade is probably the certification that you will see around the most because it's on a lot of food um, and a lot of things that you might buy every day. But there is also fair trade cotton. And this basically means that the farmers are paid a premium for the cotton that they're producing, which they can use to fund community development projects. Some farmers who are fair trade still use insecticides, but only from a restricted list. And 19% of farmers who are fair trade are also producing organic cotton. If you can find cotton that is both certified as organic and fair trade, that is pretty much the best that you can get. The next one to look out for, which you might have seen, is something called the Better Cotton Initiative, or some people say more sustainable cotton. You might have seen this around a lot because it was recently announced that there was a historic uptake in more sustainably produced cotton, which now makes up 4% of the market. The cotton grown in this scheme is done so with a conscious attempt to use less pesticides, less water, and to have better rights for their farmers. It's a really amazing step in the right direction because it's a commitment for farmers that's really manageable and achievable. Also, a lot of mainstream brands are signed up to it and it's proving that there's a demand for more sustainable cotton. However, on the flip side, the way that they measure progress is pretty vague and it's voluntary and they allow the use of GM seeds. The rise of better cotton on the high street is attributable to initiatives like the Sustainable Cotton Challenge, spearheaded by the Prince of Wales' Sustainability Unit, Marks & Spencer and the Soil Association. The 36 companies signed up are all committed to using 100% sustainably sourced cotton by 2025. If you want to buy something made out of organic cotton and you're not sure where to start, never fear because I have put a list of shops in the description that you can go and buy it from. And if your favourite brands don't stock organic cotton, then you should feel empowered to ask them more about their fabrics and find out what their plan is for stocking more organic fabrics. Twitter and Instagram are a great way to get hold of brands and ask them questions like this. We aren't asking you to change your entire wardrobe to organic cotton overnight, but the next time you are buying something new, consider it as an option and see if you can find an organic alternative. Let me know what you think about everything that we spoke about today in the comments, and I will see you in a few weeks' time. And that's the end of the episode. To find out more and to get inspired, head to our website, www.hubbub.org.uk, where you'll find loads of top tips to give you the spark to do things differently. Tune in for the next episode and come and join the hubbub.